This show is so dope. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, good your everyday nerd, B-Sides Editions. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. On the B-Sides, we cover anything and everything in the same format as your everyday nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. Today might be a little bit longer, but I recently watched the entirety of Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix, and I really enjoyed everything about it. So instead of just doing a regular review of it, I decided, yo, what if we rank all 18 episodes from worst to best? So here we go. For those who don't know anything about it, Love, Death, and Robots is an 18 episode anthology on Netflix. Each episode is created by different animators and writers, making them all fairly different from each other. The main theme that keeps them all together though is subjects dealing with love, death, and well, robots. Also cats. There's a lot of cats in this show for some reason. Right off the bat, I will say that this series is NSFW. There is a lot of adult material here, so don't watch this with your kids. Also, I won't be giving major spoilers, so you can watch all these by yourself. Without further ado, let's rank all these episodes from worst to best. Somewhere in Siberia, elite units of the Russian army fight an unholy evil. Starting off with my least favorite was unfortunately the last episode in the anthology, and that was Secret War. I don't hate any of these episodes, but this was by far the blandest one. While there are certain episodes that shout creativity, have beautiful animation and very intriguing and somewhat depth storytelling, Secret War is basically just a video game cutscene. It's definitely well animated and I will say that you sometimes forget that it's even animated, it looks that realistic, but at the end of the day these characters just weren't that fleshed out, I got a little bit bored and there wasn't anything creative about it. A gang of cyborg thieves stage a high-speed heist of a heavily armored convoy in Blindspot. While the animation in this one was certainly more appealing to me, again, it was just kind of boring. All the characters were one note, and while the action was well done, I just wasn't really invested in the story. It's about a heist, and that's about it. It does have a bit of a twist at the end, but which was kind of cool, but it didn't hit me emotionally like some of the other episodes did. After the dropship Lucky 13 lost two crews, no pilot would fly her, but rookies don't get a choice in Lucky 13. This is another one of those more realistic episodes. This one definitely was not bad at all, I actually really enjoyed the story, but again the artwork is still very video gaming to me, and I do enjoy the connection between the pilot and the ship, but the ending was also very, very predictable to me. Deep in Afghanistan, two marines with supernatural powers face a threat from one of their own, in Shapeshifters. As you can see, a lot of these more realistic episodes just didn't appeal to me. This one is another one, the animation, it's fine, it's good, it's very good, it's just, it's just kind of boring to me. Uh, the story and the character interactions here were better than the other episodes though. The final fight scene was very gruesome and very engaging, but overall there's just better episodes. In the underground world of Beastie Fights, Sunny is unbeatable as long as she keeps her edge. Sunny's Edge was the first episode in the anthology and honestly I'm a bit mixed on this one. Overall I do like the character designs of the Beasties here, they were super dope. We do have a really gripping fight that kept me on the edge the entire time. But that's not the only use of the word edge in this episode because frankly it was really really edgy at certain points. I hate using this word to describe anything because it's so overused on the internet, but since this is an animated adult series, the writers and a few of these do take the liberty of using profanity every three seconds, and it makes a lot of interactions, especially in this one, just kind of feel forced and unrealistic. Also, there's a lot of gore in this one along with a few others, but this one especially was just... It was just too much and it just kind of left me, again, on the edge with this one. Uh, but overall, the ending was really cool and I liked the twist and that got me interested in seeing more episodes. But I was more excited that the second episode was in a different art style to, to, to really keep me going. <music> 
stranded in orbit, an astronaut must find a way to save herself before her oxygen runs out in helping hand. This one I appreciate so much more for the title. It has to do with the twist and that's just pretty funny to me in retrospect. Yes, this one is more realistic, but it's one of the better ones for sure because it doesn't focus too much on dialogue. We get a lot more emotions. And so I really like this one for its storytelling. Finally, we're getting into the bulk of episodes that I really thought had an interesting and unique story to it or the animation was really cool. Their car breaks down in the desert two salesmen take a dreamlike voyage to the dawn of time in fish night this one was a bit bizarre to me just because it actually makes no sense but i do like the animation especially towards the end of the episodes the characters were fine a bit flat but i still appreciated the concept here most unleashed by an archaeological dig a bloodthirsty demon battles a team of mercenaries armed with Cats? Sucker of Souls is another episode with a unique art style that I really enjoy. Overall, I love the concept of this one. There is a twist at the end, which is a bit neat. I love the character interactions the most in this one. Also, just the absolute brutality of one particular scene, I was, I was just not ready for. There are a few funny moments in this one, making Sucker of Souls kind of a bridge between the serious episodes and the humor-filled ones. <music> Ugly Dave calls the garbage dump home, and he's not about to let some city slicker take it away from him in the dump. This one's another one that was a bit bizarre. You can kind of see the twist from a mile away, but honestly, it didn't bother me at all. I don't really have much to say about the dump. It was rather short, and definitely not one of my favorites, but it's still worth the watch. community of farmers use their homemade mechs to defend their families from an alien invasion in suits. There's a weird obsession with country folk in this particular anthology for some reason, but I did really like it in suits. The characters are definitely the best part of this one. They do end up fighting some monsters that look like that one scene in Infinity War, so they're not particularly interesting, but it's the character interactions and the fact that there were actual risks that I really enjoyed. There's a twist at the end of this one too. It's not the most profound twist, but at least it's interesting. Have you ever wanted to see Hitler die in a variety of comically fantastic ways? Well, now you can in alternate histories. This was an episode that I could see almost being its own show. In fact, this is something I could see being on YouTube if I'm completely honest. Essentially, they kill Hitler in a few different ways each one more nonsensical than the last and it ends up being pretty funny. I'm not the biggest fan of the art style. It was just fine to me. Definitely unique though. Fortunately, you don't need any kind of fancy animation to make this one enjoyable. Awakening after traveling light years off course, a ship's crew struggles to discover just how far they've come and beyond the Aquila Rift. This was the one realistic animation episode that I actually loved. I don't want to go into this one too much because I don't want to spoil it for you, but the story in this one is by far the best science fiction story in the entire anthology. I loved the twist at the end and you should definitely watch it. A young couple moves into an apartment and finds a lost civilization inside their antique freezer in Ice Age. At first, I was very confused because I didn't know animation could look this realistic but it was actually real actors in this one as the main characters. Mary Elizabeth Weinstead and Topher Grace do a pretty good job in their respective roles, but this was another episode that I appreciated mainly because of its concept. It's a little wacky and out of the box, and I loved it for that. Speaking of wacky and out of the box, when the yogurt took over, it's about some scientists that accidentally bred super intelligent yogurt that hungers for world domination. This is definitely the wackiest episode, and I mean that in a good way. I never would have thought that sentient yogurt would make for a good short film, but here we are. The animation is fine. Again, this is one that you go to for the humor and storytelling. It was very Hitchhiker of the Galaxy-esque for me. The son of a spirit hunter forges a bond of the shape-shifting spirit in good hunting. This one is my third favorite episode in terms of animation quality. 
The story ranges from a lot of natural settings to some mechanical settings, and I loved what the artist did with it. This is also one of the few episodes that I actually got attached to the characters. I love the bond that formed between the two main characters, and it's their interactions throughout the whole episode, mixed with the beautiful animation that worked really well for it. The renowned artist Zima recounts his mysterious past and rise to fame before unveiling his final work in Zima Blue. Here we have another episode that I loved for its animation. It's an abstract way of storytelling that uses its overall conception very well and I loved it so much. There's a bit of a twist at the end of this one too that I really enjoyed. If you don't watch the entire series, this one with the top two are definitely ones you should watch. After watching Sunny's Edge, you go straight into the second episode, Three Robots. Long after the fall of humanity, three robots embark on a sightseeing tour of a post-apocalyptic city. The difference between this one and about half of the episodes in the anthology is that three robots is in fact hilarious. The animation here is good, but you're going to want to watch this one for the comedy. There's a talking cat in this episode, so that should be enough to get you to watch it. At the end of the day though, my favorite episode by far was The Witness. I don't want to spoil anything about this episode, just go check it out. The animation is phenomenal. Apparently it was done by the same lead artist of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And that art style is also really, really good. This is by far the most artistic episode, both in animation and storytelling. And while I enjoyed a great bit of these episodes, having this as the third episode in the series was both great, because it made me hype for more of the series, and it was also disappointing because it was the best one. Nothing else topped it by far. But should you watch the entire of Love, Death, and Robots, I would say I think it's worth it. Not every episode is great, but there are some really great short films here, and each episode is less than 18 minutes. Most of them are less than 7 minutes, so you can literally watch this anthology in less time than most movies. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on Love, Death, and Robots are. If you've seen them, what are your favorite episodes? What are your least favorite episodes? Let me know. If you would like to see more of your everyday nerd, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.